Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Antulianos, the only show on YouTube. Every week you can get your questions answered by a medical doctor who is also a champion bodybuilder. Before we get going, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share any platforms, ring that bell. Ask Dr. T is brought to you by his book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages full of pictures and great information on training, nutrition, supplementation, and PEDs. You can get that on Amazon.com. While you're on Amazon, get my book. It's such a great book, Real Bodybuilding. And now all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome Dr. T himself. Dr. George Suliatos. Hey, George. Hi. Well, good afternoon. So, Olympia, we got all the guys qualified now, so it's time to see your early picks. I know we got four weeks away. Mm -hmm. Give me your, in no particular order, give yeah. me your, your top eight finishers. Yeah, so I would say uh, most of them have been qualified from last year, but so it's uh, – uh, it's uh, Derek Harding, Samson, Nick, yep. Andrew, um, Hunter, okay. Brandon, Seven. and uh, one more. Um, I think you gave me a message. I think you had you gave me a sneak preview earlier. Uh, yeah, let me see the message. Yeah, Derek Hottie, Walker, Samson, Brandon, Andrew Hunter, and Bonac, William Bonac. Oh, yeah, we should have neglected Bonac, of course, mm. because now he has some time to prepare. Perhaps he has more maturity now. Anyway, this is my top eight, but I don't know the particular order that will finish. Yeah. But I think, uh, according to the history, that's the best eight bodybuilders. True, true. Among the rest, you know. Uh, this Martin Fitzwater, a lot of people think he's got a good chance of breaking in there too. We'll see. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, so Let's we see about the hot names, you know, what we have seen already. You know, the representatives of what we have seen so far. It's tough. So uh, speaking, of Mr. Olympia. <laughs> Volume too high on it. Big Rami announced that he's not uh, he's not going to be competing again. So, do you think? Yeah, he's no, he, he's it's far from his. Um, you know, as Jay Cutler said once, that if you miss that mentality, then it's harder for you to come back. You know. Yeah. Um, well, Bill he did it, and Jay also, but it's not the same. It's very hard for you to have this mentality again. You know. Yeah. Now, perhaps he had some issues to stop. I don't know because he has recovered or aesthetically. It's not just fu functionally, you know? Right. Because it's about looks. Yeah. Uh, people, think he doesn't want to uh, officially announce that he's retired. Right. But mm. I mean, the, the fact that he took fifth the last time he competed at the Olympia and then he took fourth at the Arnold, it's not a good look for a guy no, who's no, no. yeah, He competed right after the Olympia 22 of the Arnold Classic. You yeah, know, yeah, I didn't push it too much, too much. So, you know, but, yeah, I saw him in uh, Rimini at uh, last year, and he was a little bit downsized, like coming off from a cycle, you know. Yeah. He did some photo shooting for Banana, but I don't think he pushed it himself in order to be back in the preparation. Right. Yeah. I mean, if he's done, he had a great career. Ten years as a pro. Yeah, two, I mean, the two biggest guy on stage ever. I mean, he had – I mean – Bigger legs than Ronnie's, you know. Oh, bigger! I don't know if anybody's ever had bigger legs than that, honestly. Ever. Uh, let me see if this video has. It only dream. It does yeah, that was Gollum. We lost the guy at 36 years old. Yeah. Was, Every part of Rich Piana, he took it to very extreme. Yeah. I don't know about Sifto, but you know he was so huge. And dying at 36 from cardiovascular issues, we we discussed this with Conor many times. Yeah. Is the cardiomegaly and the cardiomyopathy that it, it does. It's the coronary disease. Uh, it's also the left hypertrophy that um, make things a struggle, you know. And unfortunately, in your thirties, dying out of a heart attack is something extreme. But eventually, with bad core habits, meaning the steroid abuse, the lack of physical activity, the enormous BMI, that mm. put a lot of stress, and you have a family history. It's done. You know, you don't need more. Yeah, I mean, he was trying to get to four hundred pounds, and he 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 got to over three sixty. You know, Greg Kovacs was a big guy, four hundred pounds. He was six five. Yeah. And besides, he was a very very strong dude with very thick skeletal structure. Yeah. So this guy started from I think from one hundred seventy pounds and pushing himself. 
Yeah. It's not it's not the best idea to do it fast because it's unhealthy. Right. So all right, well, let's get to some questions from our viewers. This was actually supposed to be in last week and I skipped it by accident. So this was my bad. Someone wanted to know is growth hormone good for a person with type one diabetes? Can a diabetic use it? Can growth hormone give you diabetes if you don't have diabetes? Yeah, it can give you type 2 diabetes. Oof. Now, uh, if you have type 1, it means that you're using insulin. Right. Uh, so you don't produce insulin, but you're using. And also, GH with uh, uh, insulin, it increases the age of one release from the liver, and it's very anabolic. Hmm. Uh, but because of the fact that GH gives you hyperglycemia, then you need to manage and adjust your doses of insulin, but also carbs when you're type one diabetes. Yeah. So if you have if you have type one diabetes, is it more dangerous for you to use growth hormone than a guy who's? Like, so not if you have type two, it's not a good idea to start. Hmm. You definitely can reverse type two. Okay. Yeah. Or with with lifestyle, with nutrition. And with medication, but with type one, you have one extra tool, you know, one weapon, which is the insulin. And people that are type one and use insulin are getting more jacked and nourish the body. You know, as long mm -hmm. as they start with insulin, they feed up the muscles, and if they train, they gain some size. Yeah, I mean, I remember you're a little you're a little younger than me, so you might not remember. Do you remember a guy named Tim, Bel Tim Belknap, a bodybuilder, early eighties? No. He was the first pro bodybuilder that we know of that had diabetes. I believe he was type one. And the speculation was he never admitted to it that he was using more insulin than he was supposed to. And he was one of the thickest little mass monsters. He's a short guy, but he was so thick, much thicker than almost anybody of his era. This was like 1982, 83, somewhere in that range. So, yeah, I mean, it made sense for bodybuilders, especially after Milos really popularized the use of insulin. We started using that. Okay. There's another health-related question. How can a diabetic, we got a lot of diabetics writing to us this week, and gastric patient look shredded? How can they get shredded? For your reference, I'm natural. I'm also taking medication for both diabetic and gastric problems. Now, as I said before, being a diabetic means that you have, um, as you are alive, insulin, okay? Exogenous insulin is in a, in a live nurse because you feed your body. Yeah. And you do that all the time, and you can rush your nutrients into the, the, the muscle. Um, now, the point is that insulin, if you overdo it, you don't get credit because it increases the, the, the water retention, the fluid retention, mm -hmm. and it's also a fast storage hormone. So you need to manage your carbs intake yeah. and the units of insulin that you use. You need to play smart this game. And now the gastric part is, is hard because you need to digest food. Now, obviously being shredded means that you don't eat that much, you know, mm. but you need to digest at least chronic. So you need those digestive pills, okay, with um, the... Like probiotics, digestive yeah. enzymes, kind of things digestive like that. Enzymes, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, hey. with that meal, uh, but missing meals is not good, the point is, Missing calories is good for my hand because you need a caloric defect, deficit yeah. in order to be shredded, okay? So yeah. manage your absorption, your digestion, your simulation of food. Yeah. So there's really no extra challenges for a diabetic. I mean, it's calories, lowering your calories, doing cardio. It's doing what we all do to go. Yeah. Uh, it's very useful to use insulin all the time, you know? Yeah. It has to because it doesn't produce. So play smart again also and eat clean. Don't eat junk. Gotcha. All right. Next one is, gentleman says, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, but I love lifting weights. I have poor recovery. Is it better to train heavy-duty style, HIT? No, because heavy-duty breaks down the nervous system. But chronic fatigue syndrome has to do with adrenal insufficiency, the burnout of the adrenal fatigue. Hmm. And mainly it's because of lack of sleep and overuse of stimulants. Definitely the HIT is not a good idea because it stimulates that much your nervous system and you need many days to recover, especially without steroids. Hmm. But uh, it's also diagnosed by very low cortisol and uh, the DHA also is very low. 
but mainly you need to sleep efficiently with 11 to 7, of course. Yeah. Stop all the stimulants and let the labs fix by raising cortisol at least to the mid range. Yeah. And the, use DHEA exogenously because it improves the uh, metabolism of the adrenals. Okay. Yeah. All right. And don't use that. I mean, don't, don't do it with high intensity. You can do high volume, but don't go to the limits. I would think maybe it would be beneficial for someone like that who needs more time to recover to take more rest days, more days off of weights. Yeah, I definitely sleep enough or listen to your body. Do not go when you feel fatigued. Okay. And of course, check out your iron levels, your ferritin, your folic acid, your B12, and your D3 vitamin, all of them. Okay, fair enough. Okay, this is a follow up question. Last week we talked about IGF 1. Uh, so the gentleman wanted to know, if I understand it correctly, I inject the 2 IU of growth hormone after training, then eat something, and then directly inject IGF-1 LR3. Is that what you're saying? So um, I said that you need to inject IGF-1 after eating, okay? Because it's hypoglycemic to play it safe. Yeah. Now, about the GHs, uh, it's a good idea to do it on a low glucose level first in the morning and after workout because we are on low glucose after the workout. Okay. So, yes, it sounds like that. So maybe like first thing in the morning, half your GH dose, uh, post-workout for the second half, and then eat your meal and then have your IGF-1? Yeah, but this is a kind of uh, too much. I mean, it's overkill because you use also GH plus IGF-1 that means that you want an extreme rise of IGF-1 level. Mm, yeah. You know, I would say perhaps you can do uh, insulin with IGF-1. That's also hypoglycemic, but, or do GH with insulin instead of IGF-1. So, GH, right. plus IF, GH plus IGF-1 is like overkill, too much, right? Oh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Here's a good one. I know we've talked about this before. Does creatine, creatine the supplement, cause kidney damage? And does it give a false elevation for kidney values when you do your blood work? It doesn't cause kidney damage to healthy people. And uh, personally, when I'm taking five grams, my creatine is no more than one. Okay. But uh, if you have renal issues, yes. Plus, now to other people that don't hydrate or don't rest, creatine metabolized to creatine. Also, red meat contains creatine. That in uh, the creatine that also increases the creatine because it's metabolized. Yeah. So, with people with let's say creatine 1.3 or more, uh, I'll tell them quit from creatine and red meat consumption for one month mm -hmm. and let's see if it goes down. Yeah, also, no steroid inflammatory drugs increase creatine levels yeah. and GH lowers creatine. Mm -hmm. So, you need to know that GH is supportive of the kidneys. Yeah, so even when I think we've talked about if you want to have a a lower creatinine reading on your blood work to stop training for a couple of days before yeah, you uh... over the day, but not to all the cases. I mean, hydrobromyolysis. Some people and the creatinine was untouchable, you know. Oh, wow. So it remained well. But to other cases, if it's also dehydration, yes, it may elevate and then it stresses the glomerulus. Okay. A final question. Dr. T, many soccer players got caught with Nandrolone in the 90s, including Edgar Davids and Pep Guardiola, why would Nandrolone help with soccer? They use it right after the uh, period is finished, you know, after the playoffs and the and the end of the championships. During the first month of uh, preparation, bulk, because soccer players do very high intensity and they lift weights in, in the very first month of the preparation before the champions start. Okay, they want to build thick quads, all right, speed, explosiveness. DECA is very good because it masks pain. Mm. And it's, we have to admit that it's a pharma-based medication, okay? I, I don't think that millionaire of, uh, millionaires, um, football players, will risk 100 grams shit. Yeah. So they go to the pharmacy to get that, or the doctor of the club. The point is, not only is the worst case, for detection because it remains the system 18 months. Mm. All right, yeah. but it's very good because it helps with stamina and increase hematocrit. It masks the pain in the knees. 
yeah. it will muscles it, it, it influxes uh, in flush the water into the muscle okay uh, but it's not a good idea for uh, doping and the okay cool all right well that is our show for this week it's been another awesome episode again please like share subscribe ring the bell do all that good stuff and doctor we thank you so much for being here every week for the viewers medical doctor who can talk about this stuff who has also been there and done that still trains hard at 51 years of age you're still yeah. a young guy i'll be 55 in six days Jeez, wow Whew, getting old anyway that's it thank you so much doctor and thank you guys for watching Another awesome episode of Ask Dr. Testosterone. Leave your questions down, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.